Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this ordinary meeting of Wellington Shire Council on this Tuesday, the 15th of October 2019. Members of the public gallery should note that Council records and publishes Council's meetings via YouTube to enhance the accessibility of Council meetings to the broader Wellington community. These recordings are also archived and may be published on Council's website for viewing by the public or used for publicity or information purposes. At the appropriate time during the meeting, members of the gallery may address the council, at which time the image, comments or submissions will be recorded. Members of the public who are not in attendance at council meeting, but who wish to communicate with the council via the webcasting chat room, should lodge their questions or comments early in the meeting to ensure that their submissions can be dealt with at the end of the meeting. Please could gallery visitors and councillors ensure that mobile phones and other electronic devices are turned off or in silent mode for the duration of the meeting. And if we could stand for the acknowledgement and the prayer. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of, of this land, the Gunnar Kurnai people, and pay respects to their elders, past and present. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the Wellington Shire Council, its councillors, officers, staff, and their families. We pray for your guidance in our decisions so that the true good of the Wellington Shire Council may result to the benefit of all residents and community groups. Amen. Memory CEO, we have one apology from Councillor Stevens. Yes. Is it? Uh, are there any declarations of conflicts of interest? Moving on to item A4, confirmation of minutes of the previous council meeting. Councillor By. Thanks, we are moved to council adopt the minutes and resolutions of the ordinary council meeting of the 1st of October 2019. That was seconded by Councillor Crosley by that much. Is that opposed? If not, the motion is carried. You wish to speak to that, Councillor By? No. Uh, no business arising from previous meetings, CEO? No, And no late items? Uh, no notices of motion. Moving on to item A8, receiving of petitions or joint letters. Uh, we have no outstanding petitions, CEO. Moving on to item A82, receipt of petition, leaves from deciduous trees in Desailly Street sale. We have a member of the gallery who'd like to speak to this item. So if you'd like to come forward to the lectern, State your name and uh, where you're from, and you have um, three minutes to address council in regard to this matter. Thank you. My name is uh, Mari Barrett from Sale. So, Mr. Mayor, councillors, uh, I'd like to explain in more detail some of the points in the letter I sent you last week, and which is obviously tabled here this evening. The oak trees at issue are planted in Desaney Street between MacArthur Street and Stall Street. So to put you in the situation, you're in Bunnings Car Park, you cross over MacArthur Street, you're in Desailly Street. So it's from MacArthur Street up to Stall Street. There are uh, oak trees there. And then you have Brennan Park uh, from Stall Street to Fitzroy Street, and there are no oak trees there. They're big, beautiful plane trees, but they're not oak trees. And then from Fitzroy up to Raglan Street, there are oak trees again. Right? So our request is that council remove the oak trees from both sides of Desailly Street and replace them with smaller trees. For example, medium-sized Australian native trees, crepe myrtles and Japanese maples, and other uh, similar-sized trees. Now these latter two examples, the crepe myrtles and the Japanese maples, are medium-sized trees. They're very beautiful. They're deciduous to provide winter light, summer shade, and street beauty, which are major criteria for choosing what kind of trees are actually planted. So now to explain the reasons for our request. Please note first, though, that the orientation of Desailly Street runs from south to north, from MacArthur Street to Raglan Street, right? Now this orientation, this south-north orientation is really important to the issue. The prevailing winds in sail outside of summer are westerly winds, including northwest winds and southwest winds. So we have a south-north oriented road 
with the westerly winds blowing towards the east. This means that when the leaves fall from the oak trees, all the leaves on the trees on both sides of DeSailly Street are blown onto the properties on the east of DeSailly Street. So all the leaves from all the trees because of the prevailing westerly winds. Now the present oak trees are not even half of their future potential size. And if nothing is done, they're going to grow much, much bigger with an even more massive amount of leaves falling in the future for decades and decades to come. So now I'd like to refer to Council's North Sale Future Plan. Part of that plan shows street planning and tree sizes applicable to specific streetscape criteria. So Desailly Street has, a, has wide nature strips, a two-lane road with room for parallel parking on both sides of the street, and it also has a footpath on only one side of the street. So the criteria for this, actually large tree plantings would usually apply in this scenario. However, usual does not take into consideration the south-north orientation of Desailly Street with the prevailing westerly winds and the subsequent leaf fall impact to properties on the east side of the road. Properties on the west side suffer little, if any, leaf fall impact. Now another consideration, if the oak trees are permitted to get larger and larger, those planted under the overhead electricity wires on the east side of the street will need to be regularly pruned and sculpted out by council and will quickly become very disfigured and unsightly to see because these are huge trees. And the beauty of the treescape in Desailly Street will be seriously eroded. So to summarise, we suggest that the optimum resolution to the problem of cleaning up massive amounts of leaves and the unsightly pruning of these large trees in the future due to the overhead electricity lines is to replace the existing oak trees immediately with smaller, more manageable trees. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much. Have a move for, that, for the motion. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I move that Council receive the attached petition in relation to leaves from deciduous trees in Desailly Street South. Second of that motion. Councillor By, is that motion opposed? If not, the motion is carried. Councillor Rossetti. Uh, thanks, Mayor, and certainly thanks, Mari, for, for going to the trouble of actually letting us know what the thoughts are of the residents of the street and also going to the trouble of getting the signatures of, uh, of the people in that street. Certainly trees are an important part of, of our environment around our homes um, and, uh, and knowing that it's giving you that much grief uh, is, is a good thing to talk to us about, so thank you. Um, and what will happen now is that uh, with the petition it will uh, lay on the table typically for two meetings. So uh, the meeting on about the uh, 20th-ish yeah. of November, the second meeting in the month, uh, that we come back with a report from council um, and typically then that would be for council laws to look at the report and, and make a decision around that. Um, so you're certainly welcome to, uh, to come back then or to uh, come back in for the meeting in the meantime if others would like to speak. Uh, but we really appreciate you bringing it to our attention. So thank you. Thanks very much. And as I mentioned earlier, if you wish to remain for the balance of the meeting, you're welcome to do so. And if you'd like to take your leave, you're also welcome to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to item A9, any invited addresses, presentations or acknowledgements? No, we'll move on. <coughs> no questions on notice, CEO. <laughs> Moving on to item A11, which is the Mayor and Councillor's Activity Report. And um, before we look to move that, I'll just pick up, this is a, a really interesting sort of report in regard to some of the things which we engage in collectively. Um, some of the edited highlights from my perspective, among others, was the participation in the law enforcement torch run in Sale, which was uh, a terrific event, well attended. The Gippsland Times did manage to report that I did the walk despite my bad back, so <laughs> never talk off the record to a reporter. And you'll find yourself with an interesting quote. So that was a, a great, great level of community participation great role with our, our police, um, police force being engaged in that and just a really nice feeling in the community. 
We had some other really great events during this particular period as well. Uh, the Youth Art Prize was a, was, a, was a great night, well attended, and just simply, it's great to see the vibrancy and the enthusiasm of our young people, our own youth council who are engaged in putting that event together. A magical musical performance by one of our up and coming stars in the community, uh, along with a great collection of artwork. I think I mentioned last time, whilst it wasn't in the report, that we just come off the back of a meeting with the, with the Premier and the Ag Minister in regard to their more recent announcement of support uh, for our, our ongoing drought and the fact that we appreciated their presence here in our part of Gippsland. I think there's some of the highlights out of this report. Um, I'm ever grateful for uh, all of the councillors who, who pick up um, and, and get to as many things. You can only be in so many places yourself and uh, it's great to see the team effort uh, which this report uh, reflects upon. So uh, having said that, um, I'm looking for someone to move this motion. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move that the Mayor and Councillor Activity Report be noted. I have a second for that motion. Councillor McCubbin, I think that was. Is that motion opposed? If not, the motion is carried. Just to speak to that further, Councillor Rizzini. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and, and thank you for your commentary around that. I, I also note in there a couple of other things. The, um, the, the wine show, um, highlighting a lot of our uh, great produce from the whole Gibson area. It's the first time, I think possibly ever, it's been held in sale. It's yes. been typically in the past held at Lardner Park in yes. Inverloch. Um, so yes. it, was, it was great to be able to host that here. The, the Council uh, sponsored the wine of the show. Um, and that was uh, local wine from up, up at um, a Little Lightfoot, I think it was. Anyway, but I also note here you've been having some chats with um, Darren Chester, a local federal mm, member. Indeed. Um, and it's been terrific uh, that he's been keeping a real interest in the RAF base and the expansion there. Um, in fact, I had some conversations just this week with uh, people from Central Flying School talking about how the new basic flight training service is working there. And apart from a few hiccups, it's actually um, gunning along quite well. I'm sure that the councillors will note many, uh, uh, many more aircraft movements overhead with the PC-21s. But a couple of the interesting elements that councillors may not be aware of, but that I don't think we expected when we were really pushing for the BFTS to come into sale. Um, one of them is we knew that we'd get the first time um, applications for pilots. I think originally they were looking at going through Point Cook, but they're actually coming to sale now to be, to be uh, assessed. But the really exciting thing about that is when they used to go to Tamworth, it was like, well, you either made the cut for, um, for pilot or you didn't. And that was it, you went home, you didn't make the cut. What's happening now, which is super exciting, is that the young, youngsters who are coming in here and applying for pilots, um, if they're not quite competitive for the pilot positions, they're actually able to then say to them, hey, what do you think about, um, you've got the skills to go into uh, air navigation mm. or considering all the other roles they can have. So that there's actually more opportunities for the youngsters who are applying for pilots when they don't make <coughs> the cut, um, which wasn't happening before. And that's obviously better for them and better for recruitment with the, with the RAF as well. The other interesting element is we've been speaking a lot about, um, about accessibility issues around the council table. And uh, the difference with the PC-21 and the, the amount of people who can, um, who can actually fly it uh, because of their physical size, and particularly women. Uh, the, the people I was speaking to at, the, at uh, CFS was talking about how uh, often the women were smaller who were applying and simply couldn't, weren't able to fly because of the restrictions on what size you can be and what height and what weight. But the PC-21 is much more um, forgiving with what people can and can't do. So where we looked at originally supporting the RAF through the expansion of bringing BFTS in uh, because of the economic benefit and the securing of the RAF base, there's been a whole lot more benefits that uh, have been coming in. So I'm very excited to think that we actually had a part in being able to bring that into our community um, and seeing it flourish now, uh, it's something we can all be very proud of. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rossetti. Uh, don't believe we have any reports of delegates for this meeting. Moving on to item C 1.1, Chief Executive Officer's Report. Councillor By. Thanks, Mayor. I move that the Chief Executive Officer's Report be received. Microphone's playing up. Seconded by Councillor McCubbin. Is that opposed? If not, the motion is carried. Councillor By. Thanks, Mayor. Um, this is probably one of the quieter reports that I'll do for the CEO. But it's interesting, he's had a lot of internal things um, this month and he's actually taken a week of annual leave, which is well deserved. 
Um, but he still gets around. He's been to Melbourne. Uh, he's been to Terrelgan. He's been to Warrigal. He's been over to Mafra. So he's still been doing a lot of important things. Uh, a couple of things that are very important to this area, he met with uh, uh, a couple of the TAFE team to, to get an update on what's happening with the project there. And of course with ESO's announcement, he's had a few meetings with ESO because that's an important uh, thing for this region and uh, he's keeping abreast of everything. So well done, CEO. Thanks, Councillor Bai. Moving on to item C1.2, September 2019, Council Performance Report. Councillor Ripper. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> I'd like to move the council receive and note the September 2019 council performance report as attached. Second of that motion, Councillor Crosley. Is that motion opposed? If not, the motion is carried. Councillor Ripper. Thank you, Mayor. Section 1381 of the Local Government Act 1989 requires that at least every three months, the Chief Executive Officer must ensure that a statement comparing budget revenue and expenditure for the financial year with the actual <coughs> revenue and expenditure to date is presented to council at a council meeting, which is open to the public. The September 2019 council performance report comprises key highlights towards achievement of the 2017 2000 to 2021 council plan this report covers activity and progress against Council's plan, highlights and budget for the first quarter of 2019 to 2020. On the basis, I would like to mention some of the Council plan highlights for the September quarter. Drought support initiative, debit cards. Council allocated one million from the 2019-20 budget as direct drought support for farmers and also the Wellington economy, with recipients urged to spend the money locally. As of the 30th September 2019, 541 debit cards have been distributed as part of this drought support initiative. And I've been around a few of the shops and uh, the shopkeepers are recognising that the uh, money is coming in and being spent in their shire. So there's a lot of very happy farmers and happy shopkeepers and other relevant businesses. Next is the SO Night Under the Stars. The SO Night Under the Stars, which is a free community concert presented by, to, by Council and SO at the Botanic Gardens on the 2nd of November to come, 2019, was advertised this month with over 2,300 people booking in the first three days. This will be a tremendous community event and shows great support for our community from ESSO. Lego program for the kids. So we, adults, kids, we're looking after everyone. The extraordinary Bricks for Kids Lego program was the highlight of a spring school holidays at the Wellington Libraries with sessions for up to 40 children fully booked out in most branches. Kids aged 5 to 12 had a great time with the superhero themed hands-on activities which provided an exceptional experience for kids to build unique models with Lego, bricks and robotics. Transformation Challenge. The 12-week Transformation Challenge commenced on the 9th of September 2019 at Aqua Energy with a whopping, a whopping 54 participants enrolled, surpassing expectations. This has resulted in a higher level of instructor-led activities in the gym. This program equips participants with the support and tools needed to achieve and maintain fitness goals. A special mention, this has been prepared for me I, this has been prepared for me. A special mention must go to our CEO who has enrolled in order to maintain his athletic physique. This has been written for me. I'm sorry, but I had to go with that because I was under pressure from a particular manager. 
a particular manager who is this end of the other managers. This end to closest to me, CEO. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Moving on, capital project progress. Cameron Stadium redevelopment construction works for the first stage has commenced on site this month, which <coughs> this week uh, quite a few of us, plus the relevant uh, delegates from government and LVA were there, and it was wonderful to see. And um, Councillor Hole has a long background within this of getting this up and running. So that was an absolutely fantastic uh, situation to see. Braglong Recreation Reserve Pavilion Redevelopment works are uh, all but complete with the Committee of Management expected to receive the keys shortly. And an official opening is being scheduled for November the 18th. And a lot of work has gone in, apart from those who have uh, got the um, the contract, but by those special people called volunteers in the Briaglong area. Sale Memorial Hall redevelopment stage, site bathrooms are almost complete, acoustic treatment is in the process of being installed. Sale Tennis Club upgrades, council is currently working through the logistics of the Onti car. That's a surface, and it's used in the French Open? Roland Garros. Roland Garros. And we might all remember French Open. Would we know an Australian who might have won French Open? Would we know? Ash Barty? No? Oh. Okay. Thank you very much for yes, a very impressive stuff. Yeah. Sale ten uh, so we did that one. Stratford Breck Reserve, change room redevelopment, detailed design, documentation completed and awaiting review for estimates. Stevenson Park redevelopment process on Detailed design on whole pending update estimates. So, and Pine Lodge, tennis court resurfacing, tender evaluation completed. So, lots of things are happening. And with regard to our finances for this quarter, which is very important, it is only the first quarter of the 2019 20 financial year, and therefore, at this stage, we are in line with budget. However, we cannot comment on any further financial trends. It is also pleasing to note that the work being undertaken by councillors and council staff is ensuring that council continues to remain financially sustainable. Thank you, Mayor and councillors. Thank you, Councillor Ripper, for that very comprehensive report. And it's good to know that we've, uh, we've hit the ground running in our first quarter. So thank you very much for that. Can we move on to item C, 1.3, appointment of audit and risk committee member? Councillor By. Thanks, Mayor. I move that Councillor council appoints an independent member to council's audit and risk committee for the three-year period commencing the 29th of October 2019 and expiring 28th of October 2022, in accordance with the recommendation in the attached confidential evaluation report of item F1.1 of the council meeting agenda and item two as read. Thanks, Councillor By. That was seconded by Councillor Rossetti. Is that motion opposed? If not, the motion is carried. You wish to speak to that, Councillor By? Yes, thanks, Mayor. Um, the Audit and Risk Committee is a formally appointed committee of the Council and is responsible to Council. It's an important uh, role that they perform. The Audit and, Audit and Risk Committee's role is to report to Council and provide appropriate advice and recommendations on matters relevant to its charter in order to facilitate decisions making by Council in relation to the discharge of its responsibilities who is on the Audit and Risk Committee. There are two councillors, which is Councillor Hall and Councillor Stevens, which is absent today, and I fill in uh, when they can't uh, be on the committee. And we appoint three external independent people as well. Um, one of the people that are currently uh, on the committee have, uh, is coming to the end of their term, so it's time to get a new person. Now, this is not something we take lightly. Uh, we advertise for a uh, person. Uh, we do interviews and then we actually uh, appoint someone. Um, so that's the process we've gone through uh, and the uh, new person will um, start at the end of the current uh, audit committee uh, person at the end of October. Thanks, Councillor By. Thanks very much. Could we move on to item C2.1, Assembly of Councillors? Councillor Ma. 
I move that Council note and receive the attached Assembly of Councillor records for the period 25 September 2019 to the 9th of October 2019. Second for that motion, Councillor Crosley. Is that motion opposed? If not, the motion is carried. Councillor Ma. Moving on to item C2.2, consideration of the 2018-19 annual report. Could I just make a comment in introducing this item, Councillor, Councillor Hole, you're happy to move this. Um, I just thought I'd quote myself, which I'm inclined to do from time to time, in introducing this item. Uh, and, and I said these words, which start with the words in closing. Uh, can I take this opportunity to acknowledge the absolute privilege to have served as mayor over this last year? And importantly, to acknowledge my councillor colleagues, the CEO, and indeed all members of the Wellington Shire team who, with professional respect and dedication, make my job easy. That's from page 22 of this fabulous document, which uh, Councillor Hole is about to move. And that really is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of um, the level of cooperation support that we are very privileged to receive. And, in line with the briefing today we had in looking back on the 2018-19 year uh, and to, to all of our staff uh, and to, to my colleagues, a, a job well done. Over to you now, Councillor Hull. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to move the Council consider, discuss and receive the annual report for 2018-19 in accordance with the requirements of the Local Government Act of 1989. The second for that was Councillor Ripper. Is that motion opposed? If not, the motion is carried. Councillor Hull. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the annual report is a pretty substantial sort of document that you've just pointed out. And if people sit down and read it, they'll realise that Council isn't just roads, rates and rubbish. The, some of the statistics that are, that are contained in the, in the document is that we have a population of 44,019 um, they'd have to be cared for and looked after ever, in, in many ways, which I'll raise as I go through here. Our medium age in this area is 43, and, and the state average is only 37, so we're a slightly older, older population. And 20.2% of our population is over 65, uh, compared to only 15.6% uh, statewide. In the uh, employment sector, 13.6 uh, are employed in healthcare, 13.3 in agriculture, fishing and forestry, and 9.7 is in construction, and the rest are in, in retail. Some of, the works that, some of the works that have been done uh, in the previous 12 months, and they make for some interesting figures, uh, that 35,000 square metres of sewer local roads were reconstructed, 684,000 square metres of local roads were resealed. One interesting one, a bit over one and a half million curbside garbage and recycling bins were collected. We had 2,548 kilometres of gravel roads graded and 5,353 kilometres of roadside slashing. We had 252,000 visits to the council pools around our shire and 273,000 visited the six libraries. And to support the community, committees of management, we distributed $549,233. We had 449 planning approvals, we had 122 million approved, and we had 603 emergency after our call-outs, and one other little interesting one, we had 521 lost pets reunited with their owners. Do you want to be ear tagged? <laughs> um, and, so, and some of the highlights of the year, um, we had uh, 1,700 of our youngest members of our community participated in Children's Book Week. A new council, a new youth council was inducted in August and in October saw the official opening of the pavilion and new uh, state-of-the-art hockey pitch. There were many varied shows at the Wedge with uh, a lot of them totally sold out and it brought entertainment to the citizens from Wellington and beyond. The art gallery was visited by over 37,000 art lovers to see the many varied exhibitions that were regularly changed. The document is the most interesting report to our community of the activity of this council or of their council. It is comprehensive. 
And so, Council, we congratulate the CEO and all our staff who compiled a serious but easily readable report. Thanks, Councillor Hull. Can we move on to item C 3.1, quarterly strategic land use planning update? Councillor Ma. I move that Council receive the 2019 third quarterly update on the strategic land use planning work program included in attachment one to this report. It was seconded by Councillor Bai. It was very quick. Is um, that opposed? If not, the motion is carried. Councillor Ma. Firstly, before I run through with the summary of the current strategic um, planning, I'd firstly like to um, just say a thank you um, to our general manager, John Websdale, and his planning team and those officers that attend the SLUP committee. Um, councillors certainly appreciate the load of work that um, your team currently undertakes and the amount that is um, crossing their desks on a day-to-day -day basis. And yet, um, your team certainly finds time to provide updates and um, reports and outlines um, for the, for the SLUP committee councillors, and you seem to um, do it in a very short period of time. So we would just like to um, say thank you, and John, you'll be missed. So um, moving on, <laughs> with regard to the North Sale Development Plan and Developer Contributions Plan. This has been a, a lot of hard work and um, complicated and complex work that um, continues to be prepared. The, in, the infrastructure funding arrangement is to seek equitable apportion of costs associated with the required infrastructure provision across the developable land. Uh, West Sale and Warwick Industrial Land Supply Strategy, and this is the preparation of the technical report. A suite of draft technical reports has been completed and is currently being reviewed by council officers. The recommendation of the draft reports have identified a number of matters that require further consideration, and officers are currently working with the relevant authorities to um, address these issues prior to finalising. The planning in the economic growth zone, also known as PEGS, um, this aims to support economic development through a review of the Wellington planning scheme provisions, creating a simpler, more consistent and less cumbersome planning system. Council is currently working closely with the state government smart planning team to translate the Wellington planning scheme into a new statewide format before initiating initiating a formal amendment process to formalise all of the work in late 2019. Um, with regard to the Port of Sale East Bank Redevelopment Study, uh, this aims to investigate the land use opportunities and planning provisions required to guide redevelopment of the land located um, formerly occupied by the Sale High School and Specialist School. Following community consultation in February of 2019, consultants prepared the final uh, the draft planning scheme provisions to facilitate appropriate use and development on the site. And this is currently being reviewed by council and a range of other key stakeholders, including the Department of Treasury and Finance. The MAFRA structure plan. Uh, background preparation work has commenced on the MAFRA structure plan. Um, this will focus on the growth needs of MAFRA and establish a direction as to how and where it should develop into the future. It's anticipated that the structure plan will be completed by June 2020. A review of planning controls, RAF base, East Sale. Background work is now being undertaken to review and assess updated noise contour mapping to support the ongoing operation of the airfield. It's anticipated that officers will engage with the Department of Defence in October 2019 to initiate these discussions. Uh, the C99 update flood mapping. This is currently um, being deferred until further notice. The C102 technical amendment. Minor policy neutral technical errors within the Wellington planning scheme. 
um, is basically what this um, is addressing. Um, it's detailed um, content and will be discussed with um, DELP, the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning in due course, and where necessary um, conversations will be held with affected landowners. Uh, the C103 West Sale Industrial Land. This applies to 55 hectares of agricultural land immediately adjacent to the east of West Sale Airport. This is currently being considered for approval by the Minister of Planning. And C94, rezoning of the former Sale Police Station site. The State Government is still continuing to resolve this matter with regard to the removal of native title. And um, currently, that is what is preventing the sale of the land and redevelopment of it. Thanks, Councillor Ma. If we could move on to item C3.2, monthly planning decisions, the month of August. And I think, uh, Councillor Ma, we're uh, in your hands. Yep. I move that Council note the report on recent planning permit trends and planning application determinations between the 1st of <coughs> August and 31st of August 2019. Can I second of the motion, Councillor McCubbin? If that motion is opposed, if not, the motion is carried. Councillor Mark, we'll move on. If we move on to item, it's uh, the Councillor Mark show for a moment. Item C 4.1, unsealed road reconstruction, southern okay. maintenance area. Councillor Mark. Uh, I move that, oh, that, that Councillor adopt the recommendations contained in the attached confidential tender evaluation report at item F1.2 of the Council meeting agenda for contract 2020-016, unsealed road reconstruction, southern maintenance area, and the rest is read. Second of that motion, Councillor Crosley. Is that motion opposed? No. Not the motion is carried. Councillor Ma. The Wellington Shire maintains 1,560 kilometres of gravel unsealed <coughs> roads. Um, this is um, part of the annual program for gravel resheeting on selected roads, and these works will have a positive impact, improving road surfaces and increasing the service life of these roads for communities. Sections of road include the Gormandale Stradbroke Road, Carajung Road, and Princess Street in Port Albert. And as a Port Albert um, resident, I can certainly confirm that um, Princess Street has certainly been an issue for those landowners um, over the last um, couple of years. And I am sure that they will be really happy to hear that um, this has been included in this program. And thank you on their behalf. Thanks, Councillor Ma, and I'm pleased to announce a successful tender as Bensdale Road Services at Proprietary Limited. Moving on to item C 4.2, application for unused road licence in Parish of Karajang at Karajang Lower. Councillor Crosley. Thank you, Mayor. I move that pursuant to section 400 of the Land Act 1958, Council gives notice that the government roads south of, of lots 1 and 2, TP 116551. Parish of Karajong is not required for public traffic and is therefore an unused road. Second of that motion, Councillor Ma. Is that motion opposed? Not the motion is carried. Councillor Crosley. Uh, thank you. The, uh, this is a fairly standard operation that uh, the adjoining land holder <coughs> wishes to uh, lease uh, that now determined unused uh, roadway. Uh, DELP requires that the council have advertised this. This was done on the 28th of August and there were no uh, submissions were received. So now we can uh, inform DELP that it's no longer required for public traffic and therefore uh, DELP uh, can lease this land to the adjoining hand, uh, land holder which can be either on an annual, triannual or a 99 year lease. Uh, and DELP can also revoke that at any, any stage. So this is just a tidying up and making uh, good use of, of that unused piece of land. Thanks so much, Councillor Crosley. If we could move on to item C5.1, Community Assistance Grants, Events, Projects and Facilities, August 2019. Councillor Ripper. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move that Council approve the recommendations to allocate community assistance grants, events, 
projects and facilities, August 2019 funds as detailed in attachment A, and that applicants be notified of the outcome of their applications. Second of that motion. Councillor Holt. Is that motion opposed? If not, the motion is carried. Councillor Ripper. Thank you, Mayor. The Community Assistance Grants scheme encourages the development of <coughs> initiatives in the community in line with the Council's vision, Wellington 2030. Not-for-profit community groups operating in the Wellington Shire can apply for Community Assistance Grants, $2,000 to $5,000. The following applications were received and recommended for the 2019 funding round. There were 21 event applications received, totalling $99,000-odd. There were 13 project applications received, totalling $58-odd. And 10 facility applications received, totalling $44-odd. So I would encourage everyone within the Wellington Shire to put in for applications. They are there, providing you follow the, uh, the process. And if you're unsure, the Shire staff are only too happy to help. And the applications are assessed by a community assistance grant panel, the panel which comprises staff at a management and or coordinator level. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Ripper. Uh, moving on, no urgent business, CEO. Uh, this is the uh, opportunity now for further gallery and chat room comments. Uh, just ask the question if there's, if there's no one in the gallery who wishes to address the council, I won't go through the preamble to this section. If uh, uh, otherwise, we'll move on. So I'd ask the question, is there anyone who wishes to address the gallery? If not, I believe on the basis that that ends business for tonight. Uh, no need to move into closed sessions on the basis we'll declare the meeting closed at 6.41. <laughs>